Hello everyone, welcome again to my class in pharmacology. Actually, this would be the continuation of our topic about your inflammatory response and the five cardinal signs of inflammation. At this juncture, we will be talking about your anti-inflammatory drugs, which are said to be the agents that generally block or alter the chemical reactions associated with the inflammatory response to stop one or more of the signs and symptoms of inflammation. Now moving forward about your anti-inflammatory drugs. There are many drugs that are used as anti-inflammatory agents. First example of your anti-inflammatory agents that can be broadly classified are your salicylates. Okay, whereas is your salicylates. Salicylates. It is also one of the oldest anti-inflammatory agents that are used. And one common example of your salicylates are your aspirin, the most popular. Aspirin. You have also your balsalazide. And we have also your mesalamine. Okay, pay particular attention with your aspirin. Your aspirin has actually four effects. Okay, four effects or properties. We have your first, it has an anti inflammatory effect anti-inflammatory then your aspirin has an antipyretic effect antipyretic when we say antipyretic effect it has a fever blocking property it is for fever then your aspirin has an analgesic effect. In fourth, it has an antiplatelet effect. Your aspirin is actually given also for the treatment among patients with myocardial infarction. Okay, for patients with myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction infarction myocardial infarction is most commonly known as your heart attack okay your aspirin again it has an anti-inflammatory effect it means to say it is also for inflammatory condition or diseases it is also it relieves fever relieves pain and I would like also to add information regarding the, the effects of your ar arachidonic acid once it is released because as it is being activated by your bradykinin the arachidonic acid releases leukotriene and prostaglandin but beside that a kind of chemicals that are being released by arachidonic acid is that it also releases releases thromboxane thromboxane it is a vasoconstrictor vasoconstrictor okay your thromboxane actually facilitate platelet aggregation facilitate platelet aggregation that is why one of the effect of your aspirin is that it also inhibits the thromboxane and therefore it will affect the the facilitation of your platelet aggregation that is how 
the mechanism of aspirin as an antiplatelet. In your balzolacin and mesalamine, they are actually given for diseases like your ulcerative colitis. Ulcerative colitis. Okay, your balzolacin, actually, this is a unique drug that is delivered intact to the colon where it delivers its local anti-inflammatory effect. Same thing with your mesalamine. Mesalamine is a unique compound that releases aspirin in the large intestine for the direct inflammatory effect among patients with inflammation of the large intestine. Okay, generally, your salicylate Okay, salicylates target the prostaglandin. Okay, this is your prostaglandin, the one that causes pain. Okay, salicylate acts by inhibiting the synthesis of your prostaglandin. So if there is no prostaglandin, then there will be no pain. That is why one of the examples of your salicylate is your aspirin. And one of the effects of your aspirin is it has an analgesic effect okay again your analgesic effect it is it means to say it is for pain it, it has a pain blocking property okay that is your dolor and your aspirin remember that it has also an antipyretic effect okay when we say antipyretic effect it has a, a fever blocking property actually it is due to the effect of your aspirin by blocking the effect of your pyrogen towards your hypothalamus. Remember, your hypothalamus is the one that regulates the normal body temperature. And because of the presence of this pyrogen, it increases the body temperature, causing a condition called fever. Okay, again, from the word pyretic, it means to say pyre or pyrexia. This, this is increase in the body temperature, so anti-fever property, okay? Or it has a fever blocking property, that is your antipyretic effect, associated with your aspirin. Okay, we have another category of your anti-inflammatory agent, okay? We have your... NSAIDs. Your NSAIDs stands for your non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Okay, non-steroidal. Steroidal. Anti-inflammatory. Tori drugs. Your NSAIDs is further classified into propionic acid. Propionic acids. The example of your propionic acid, the most common is your ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. Some of the uh, common brand names for your ibuprofen is your Advil. Okay, under your propionic acid, we have also your naproxen. Naproxen. Another subclassifications of your NSAIDs are your acetic acids. Okay, we have your acetic acids. Acetic acids. Okay, what are the example of your acetic acids? We have your diclofena. Diclofena. Common brand name for your diclofena are your Voltaren and your Cataflam. Another thing 
about your acetic acids is your etodolac. Okay, etodolac. Etodolac. And we have your endometacin. Mefacin. Then we have another subclassification of your NSAIDs. We have your phenomates. Common example of your phenomates is your mephenamic acid. Mephenamic acid. Okay, then another exam subcategory of your NSAIDs is your oxycom derivatives. Oxycom derivative. Okay, what, are the what are the example of your oxycom derivative? The most common is your meloxicom. Meloxicom. And lastly, we have also your cyclooxygenase inhibitors inhibitors um, the most common is your selecoxib you have your selecoxib selecoxib with a popular name of your celebrex that is your cox2 actually this specifically it is your cox2 inhibitor so again, we have your Coxter inhibitor, oxycom derivative, your phenomate, we have your acetic acids, and we have your propionic acid as one of the sub-classification under your NSAIDs. Then take note also that your NSAIDs generally, it also targets your, okay, your NSAID target your prostaglandin okay actually it also inhibits the same thing with your with your salicylate it inhibits prostaglandin synthesis just to give you an idea about the indication of the following drugs I mentioned let's say for example the ibuprofen as one of the widely used form of propionic acid that is under your NSAIDs and your naproxen. Actually, these two drugs are used for the treatment of pain associated with arthritis and also for dysmenorrhea. Okay, again, for dysmenorrhea and for arthritis. We have your acetic acids. Example is your diclofenac and etodolac. The diclofenac is used to treat acute and long-term pain associated with inflammatory conditions. Your etodolac is used for the same thing with your naproxen and ibuprofen. Etodolac is used for pain associated with arthritis. Your endometacin, actually, it is used... To promote closure of your patent ductus arteriosus among infants. It is also available in oral, topical, and rectal preparation for the relief of moderate to severe pain associated with inflammatory conditions. We have your phenomates. The common example is your mephinamic acid. Your mephinamic acid, take note that it is only used for short-term treatment of pain. We have your oxycom derivative. Example is your meloxicam. Your meloxicam is also used for the relief of the signs and symptoms of juvenile arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and osteoarthritis. Actually, there are several types of arthritis. So again, we have your rheumatoid, osteo, and juvenile form of arthritis. The same thing with your cyclooxygenase inhibitors. They are also given or indicated for the treatment of arthritis. Actually, your selexib is a COX-2 inhibitor. So, 
back again with our topic that cyclooxygenase enzyme is responsible for the conversion of your radicinin into arachidonic acid in which arachidonic acid activates prostaglandin in which prostaglandin in turn causes pain. Okay, another category of your anti-inflammatory agent is your corticosteroids. Corticosteroids. Okay, your corticosteroid generally target the arachidonic acid or they block the arachidonic acid. Your corticosteroid has three general classifications. Okay, we have your GMA. What is this GMA? Okay, G stands for your glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids. M stands for your mineralocorticoids. Mineralocorticoids. A stands for your androgens. Okay, your glucocorticoids are so named because they stimulate an increase in glucose levels. Okay, they stimulate glucose levels. Stimulate. glucose levels what are the common examples of your glucocorticoids okay we have your cortisone cortisone we have your hydrocortisone And we have your prednisone. Another thing is your prednisolone. Prednisolone. Another thing is your dexamethasone. Dexa me and lastly we have your beta metasone methasone okay your mineralocorticoids they are called mineralocorticoids because they affect the electrolyte levels okay they affect affect electrolyte levels what are the examples of your mineralocorticoids in your mineralocorticoids we have your fludrocortisone as one of the common example okay your fludrocortisone fludro Cortisone. And the classic one, a classic example of your mineralocorticoids is your aldosterone. Your androgen actually involves your male and female sex hormones. Okay? male and female sex hormones
And another thing about your androgen is that they have actually little effect compared with the sex hormones produced by the testes and ovaries. They're able to maintain a certain level of cellular stimulation and can contribute to the cell sensitive growth in some forms of cancers, particularly your prostate cancer, your breast cancer, and your ovarian cancer. These drugs are addressed particularly if we will be talking or discussing about your drugs acting on the reproductive system. Okay, take note also that your cortisone and hydrocortisone is considered as your short-acting type of your corticosteroid. Short-acting. Because the duration of, of effects of your short-acting type of corticosteroids is said to be 8 to 12 hours. Okay, around 8 to 12 hours. Another thing is your prednisone and your prednisolone. Your prednisolone and prednisone are considered to be your intermediate acting. Intermediate. Because the duration of, of effects of your intermediate acting is said to be around 18 to 36 hours. 18 to 36 hours while your dexamethasone and your betamethasone is considered to be your long-acting corticosteroid okay long-acting because the duration of, of effects of your long-acting type of corticosteroids your dexa and betamethasone is said to be around 36 to 54 hours 36 to 54 hours and bear in mind that your corticosteroids is released by your adrenal cortex adrenal Cortex. Okay, based in your knowledge from your anatomy and physiology concepts, that your adrenal cortex is the outer layer of your adrenal gland, which is also called as your suprarenal gland, that is situated at the top of your kidneys. Okay, another category of drugs that affects also the inflammatory process is your antihistamines. Okay, antihistamines. Generally, your antihistamines target the release of histamine by your mast cells and your base fields because we know the fact that your histamine causes increased capillary permeability by isodilation that later on causes to more swelling or bore hyperemia then leading to color or heat now there are a lot of examples of your antihistamine there are antihistamine that can cause drowsiness and there are antihistamine that cannot also cause drowsiness they are called non-sedating type of antihistamine. Okay. Okay, we have your diphenhydramine. Hydramine. The most popular brand name is your Benadryl. Okay, we have also your Bromphenyramine. Brom, Fene, 
bromine. And we have another example, your chlorpheniramine. Chlor. Fe. Phenira. Mean. And another example of your antihistamine that are said to be sedating or they can cause drowsiness. We have your hydroxyzine or the common brand name is your Vistaril. Hydroxyzine. Hydroxyzine. We have also your Meclizin it is commonly used for motion sickness motion sickness Meclizin okay, Bear in mind that these examples are also categorized as first generation antihistamine generation of antihistamine and they can cause again they can cause drowsiness drowsiness okay, another example of your antihistamine that are said to be uh, non-sedating this includes your cetirizine Common brand name for this is your Zyrtec. Another example is your Loratadine. Loratadine. These two example of your antihistamine is considered to be the second generation type of your antihistamine. Okay, second generation type. And they do not cause drowsiness. Okay, another class or category of drugs that affects the inflammatory response is your leukotriene receptor antagonist. Leukotriene. receptor antagonist okay what are the common examples of these drugs we have your monte lucas monte lucas and also your zaver lucas okay Zephyr Lucas. Zephyr Lucas. Actually, these drugs are commonly indicated for bronchial asthma. Since they are leukotriene receptor antagonists, the target of this drug is your leukotriene, which is involved in the promotion of your chemotaxis of the neutrophils and the macrophages which in turn they undergo a process of phagocytosis which they further um, augment the process of inflammatory response okay another class of medication that affects the inflammatory response is your gold compounds This class of medications actually indicated for the treatment for arthritis. And some patients respond to this type of treatment by using gold salts. That type of treatment that uses gold is what we call your chrysotherapy. Okay, that is your chrysotherapy. Chryso 
therapy. Uses gold salt. Example of your gold compounds is your auranofino. Auranofino. The common brand name for this is your Ridaura. Okay, what is the general effects of this class of medication? Actually, it targets the phagocytosis or it inhibits the phagocytosis. And we know the fact if there is phagocytosis, then it will also augment the process of inflammatory response. And actually, the gold salts are absorbed by the macrophages, which results to inhibition of the phagocytosis. Because phagocytosis is, is blocked, the release of lysosomal enzymes is inhibited and tissue destruction is also decreased. Okay, another um, examples of drugs, classes of drugs, that affects the inflammatory process. We have your TNF factor. Factor. And I mentioned already what is your TNF. That is your tumor necrosis factor. And we have also your interleukin type 1 receptor antagonist. Your interleukin. Interleukin. Type 1 receptor antagonist. Receptor antagonist. Okay, the TNF factor example of this drug is your okay, TNF factor blocker. Okay, your TNF factor blocker are drug that blocks the effect of your tumor necrosis factor. Example is your etanercept. Etanercept. Well, on the other hand, we have your interleukin type 1 receptor antagonist. Example is your anakinura. Anakinura. Okay, these two drugs, actually they are given to those patients who are suffering from arthritis. Okay, those are the examples of the drugs that I mentioned that mostly affects the inflammatory process. Just remember what I have discussed to you, the flow of the initiation of the inflammatory process and especially those important points about your five cardinal signs of inflammation.